Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, I've been going through the old Klemperer edition in preparation for the impending release of the new Klemperer edition, the big, huge box. So I don't have to, like, repeat myself endlessly. We can get through it a little more quickly and maybe dwell on a few things that I wouldn't be able to do in the context of, like, 95 CDs. And I practically saved the best for last because... It's this box. This has 10 CDs. It's called Romantic Symphonies and Overtures. And oh, are there some gems in here. Let me tell you. Some amazing stuff that we really have to look forward to hearing all over again. Presumably newly remastered. So let's just see what's in here, shall we? That's really great. First of all, CD1. It's all nicely on the back here. It's so convenient. Thank God. Uh, Schubert, Symphonies 8 and 9, that is the unfinished and the great. These are wonderful. They're wonderful, first of all, because of Klemperer's habitual tendency to favor the woodwinds in terms of balance, which makes the orchestration sound even more perky and lucent than it usually does. But beyond that, you know, Klemperer has a reputation, of course, as a slow guy. And he was a slow guy. I mean, he got slower as he got older and whatnot. You know, so many conductors do. But these are not slow. This is not slow, especially the great C major. You would think, you know, that it's going to be like, oh, heavy. It's, it's not. It's not. It's quite lively, but unbelievably clear. It's a beautiful performance. I mean, look, they, they fit both of them on one CD. I mean, and it's a 77-minute CD. It's not like one of those extended extra long type CDs. Just marvelous performances. Great way to start, start the production here. Then we've got Schubert's Fifth, another gorgeous performance. Um, if you like Klemperer's Mozart, like the Mozart G minor, which is glorious, then you're going to like the Schubert Five, which is kind of like Mozart does Schubert or Schubert does Mozart or whatever you want to call it. And then Mendelssohn, the Hebrides, yes. And the Scottish Symphony, well, this is a little bizarre. You know, I mean, Klimper was famous for wanting to cut the finale of the Scottish Symphony. He doesn't do it here. So I don't think he does it here. He does it somewhere else. Um, you know, and that's kind of a, it's a little bit peculiar because he wasn't convinced by the coda. I think the coda's fine. But he also does Midsummer Night's Dream, a glorious Midsummer Night's Dream incidental music and a first-class Italian symphony. Again, you know, moderate in tempo, but not a trace of heaviness. And that's that's really the important thing. You know, it doesn't it doesn't sag at any point. It's just it's just shapely. I mean it really is. It's, it's be amazed. And the woodwinds, of course. The woodwinds, yes. What else do we got here? Schumann, Symphonies 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, some hits and misses. Well, they're basically all hits except for the Rhenish. Number number four is fantastic. It's just fabulous. And one and two are very good. But the Rhenish, well, this was late, late, late clever. This was the performance where supposedly he fell asleep in the middle of it. And then they woke him up and he looked around and said, how did it go? And that was the recording. You know, they did it without him, sort of, kind of. It's it's just, it's late clever. It's it's stiff as a board and not one of his happier performances. But, you know, what can you say? Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, we get some sheen, scenes from Goethe's Faust Overture. Yes, the Faust Overture. That's nice to have. Um, there was a disc he did called Romantic Overtures that was just one of the great discs ever. And here it is. You've got Weber, Freischutz, Orianti, Oberon, and Schumann, Genoveva, and Manfred. And you get Johann Strauss too, Fledermaus, and Wiener Blut, and the Kaiser Walzer. Those are added. But originally, it was just the overtures, the Weber overtures. Oh, they're just stunning. Absolutely marvelous performances. Freischutz is one for the ages. It really is. They're, they are they're so wonderfully, youthfully romantic, if you know what I mean. They also had on here, there was the, the Wagner Gluck um, overture. What was it? If, 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 Iphigenia in Aulid or something like that. One of those Iphigenia things. That's in here somewhere, too. It's got to be, isn't it? Or is it earlier? No, it's in the other earlier one because it's not a romantic overture. But you know they had they had it attached to this, but they've they stuck it over in the in the Gluck thing here. Wait a minute. Yeah, there's a there's an earlier music thing with 
book and other people. And it's on that. It's in that box. All right. Berlioz, Symphony Fantastique, Franck D minor, beginning, Franck D minor, conclusion, and the New World Symphony. Well, this is a wonderful Fantastique. You'd expect Klemper would do it very well because of the emphasis on, you know, interesting sounds and woodwinds and creaky timbres and that kind of stuff. And again, it's not too slow, not a bit. The Franck is surprisingly good because I think Klemper was one of those steady tempo guys. It doesn't, he doesn't pull it apart like taffy and it doesn't congeal into a shapeless mass of cloggy, gelatinous, whatever. It's really quite fine. And the New World Symphony, oh my God. New World Symphony is just great because of the bass lines. It's the scherzo where you hear the canonic basses. Yes. I mean, of course, there are more important things than just the canonic basses in the scherzo. But it, it, it's, it's just marvelous to hear top to bottom transparency of sonority. And again, you know, good, lively tempos for the most part. It's really just, just a beautiful performance that kind of gives the piece more, more substance than it usually has. Probably because you do hear more, you just hear more music in it. And that, that counts for a lot. So that's that one. And then finally, at the end here, we've got Tchaikovsky four, five, and six. All right, now, the four and six are eh. I mean, four is more eh than six. Six is pretty good. But, you know, they're a little stodgy. But five is sensational. It's just a knockout. There's a famous sort of story. Walter Legg, the producer, wrote to, to EMI saying he just blew the roof off with Tchaikovsky's fifth. So let's do all four, five, and six. Well, they should have stuck just with the fifth. They really should have. But... It's okay. It's okay because this this is just a fun box of stuff. And we're going to get to hear it all again in the 95 CD Monster Box. But I did want to talk about these performances a little bit here first just to give you a taste. Something to look forward to for the most part. For the most part. One of the things about Klemper is that, you know, when he was good, he's great. And when he wasn't really good, it's like so obvious. There's no question about it. You know, I mean, it was either really, really good or really, really interesting or just <sighs> and so it's kind of easy to distinguish between the best and the less best. You know, at least he's honest. Always, always honest. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me and take care. <laughs>